everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about uh, liners. We're going to talk about the idea of lining and it's a great way to make uh, your figures pop. Uh, it's not always appropriate but there's often times where it can be a step that can take your figures up to the next level. Um, it's a very popular thing amongst historicals. Um, a lot of historical miniatures and miniature painters employ it and it's certainly something we can often do on uh, fantasy figures as well. Um, so an easy example of, of lining and where we commonly see it with uh, fantasy or sci-fi gaming figures is with armor. So here I've got uh, a storm fiend and you can see in his armor, to separate his armor plates we've done some hard black lines which makes the armor of course pop a lot more. Um, but we don't always have to have hard armor plates like that although that is a easy use for it. Here I'm going to go ahead and use this Bretonian Knight. Um, the key with lining, and if you ever see figs that really pop out to you and everything looks really clean and separated when you're looking at the photos, um, the person might have used lining to achieve that. Now they also, some people will also work shade repeatedly down into each edge near something. Um, they'll use their shadow color, um, their desaturated purple, blue, crimson, etc. Or, or dark black or, or dark gray, and they'll push it into the shadows repeatedly. We're gonna we're gonna talk about building shadows in a later video, but for now, this is a little more simple, quicker way to create it. So, and the Bretonian Knight's a great example because this horse has the shield emblem here um, on the barding, and so you know, as clean as we can make it, it's still not going to be perfectly separated from the paint around it, namely the uh, you know this cloth material. So what do we need to do some lining? Well, um, I've got my model right here, and then I've got two options. Now, uh, I've shown the Vallejo model wash dark gray for dark gray for gray and dark vehicles in the past. I really do love this stuff. It goes on black, so you can really see where you're putting it, but it dries a very subtle gray. So this is really my preferred item to do lining because it's subtle. One of the big problems with lining, and I think one of the things you got to watch out for, is you don't want it to be so strong that it's obvious there's this stark black line. Um, so that's option one. Um, option two, I have some uh, Vallejo Game ink here, just black. Um, if you're going to use something this strong, um, you generally want to water this down some. Um, you know, I didn't include Nuln Oil here. I think you could probably do it. Uh, I, I don't particularly like the nature of Nuln Oil. It has some brown in it. It doesn't cover in exactly the way I would want, so I tend to stay away from it. I like these two, though I'll say in a pinch you could probably just use Nuln Oil. Okay, for this particular example, we're going to use my preferred, which is the Vallejo Model Wash. Um, if you don't own this, I would highly recommend this. This thing has about 8 million uses. It's a really, really great paint for uses far beyond weathering, which was its original intent. Um, it darkens steel excellently. It can desaturate and uh, shadow your colors well. It's just it's just fantastic. The other thing we need is a brush with an extremely sharp point. Okay, so here I'm using a, a Winsor & Newton Series 7 size 0 um, with a very, very sharp point. Okay, you can see that. Alright, so I've got some of my uh, liner material here in my palette. And what I'm going to do is wet my brush I'm going to go in there. As usual, whenever I'm working with inks and something, you see how much that soaks up? Never get it more than halfway down the bristles because you don't want it getting down in the, in the ferrule. Then I'm going to wipe it on the edge to get some of it out because you notice it destroys your tip. When you get that much paint in, it soaks all up. The, the belly of the brush is full of paint and it's expanding the bristles. It's pushing them out. So then we're going to wipe it on our towel just a little here because I want to get off a lot of excess. I don't want a lot. And then what I'm going to do is come in here and just very, very carefully, and this is a slow process. I'm just gonna I'm gonna trace right around the edge. And the reason you want it so thin is because you want it to sort of just flow naturally into where it needs to be. But really all we're doing is tracing the edge. There's nothing incredibly magical about this. Now, this especially can work great if you've got two 
brighter colors next to each other. So if you're not, if you don't have a good dark light, dark light um, break in your fig, this can be an excellent way to carve it out. So you can see how we've got that around there. Now I'm going to do the same up here on the uh, on the barding. Right, so whenever we have a three-dimensional surface like this, it can often be hard to get an exact clean line in between the, say, like painting the front side of this here and this piece. You know, you can paint the top of this, but getting that tiny little raised ridge can often be very difficult. Doing something like black lining can be a way to make sure you've got a nice clean break between the two. And then same thing here on the saddle. This is something you can do before you highlight, or I wouldn't do it as your absolute last step, I'll say that. You generally want to be in a place where you're still painting some and can go in and correct it. But you can see the difference now, okay, between how this one stands out and this one stands out. It's subtle, okay? This isn't like a huge game changer. But if you look, look at how much more this one pops off of the barding versus this one, right? And the reason for that is because it has this dark line that cuts the edge of it and makes it so this feels on a separate plane from this. Um, darker colors recess. They fall back. They fall into shadow. So the same up here. We can see this line very clearly between here and here, whereas on this side it's not as crisp. If I go back in and do the purple, you can see how, look at the purple right now, okay? And let's just put a little black lining right along the top here. Now, that might even be a little more stark than I'd like, but that's why I like the model wash for dark gray, because it goes on nice and dark, I can see it, but as you can see this drying, it already gets a little more faded. So that will fade just a little, you can already see it happening, and it's not quite as strong. And you can see how now, all of a sudden, that uh, brown is more segmented the individual parts of the horse. You can also do this in the same way to create simple shadows underneath things. Like under here would be shadowed, right? So I can go in and I could even be a little bit heavier with it to really reinforce my shadow of where that would fall and you can see again it's a very subtle effect okay so there's not a huge sea change that happens with this but if you're trying to take you know a special figure all the way up if you're trying to keep your paint job really super clean lining can be a great way to do it again you can see here look how clean that one just looks separated from this one right Look at how the line here, you can see the hard distinction, whereas here it just sort of fades together. And the reason that this helps is because no matter how carefully you paint, when I paint this brown, I'm never going to get the line exactly straight, right, in between the two things. Like my brush is never going to be exactly perfect. But by adding the black, I create a nice, even, straight line that the eye can follow and finds appealing. So my final one here is an example. Oops. This is why I say you don't do it last. And there we go. Because I can always go in, like I haven't actually painted the brown yet, I can always go in if I go, it's nice to do this lining uh, up against the color you haven't painted. So let's say I painted the purple, I haven't finished the brown, which is in fact exactly what I've done. I can actually lean my brush against the brown, knowing that I'm going to do fix that later. Okay, so I like to line a sort of a middle step when I finish an area. Um, that way, so let's say again, I, I paint this barding, 
ostensibly what I, and I painted this white but I haven't finished it yet so I got the base color down so I can see where the edge is and then I go in and block this out and now I can go in and finish my white and if I and I when I brush I can drag my brush against the white so that way if I go a little overzealous if I my brush happens to jump and I come in here like that you know and just drag down the white no problem I'm still in there I can go back in and fix this but I don't point my brush or allow the t allow the side of the brush or anything to get near the area I've already finished. So there you go. That's lining. It's simple. It's not quick. <laughs> uh, it does take a little while to do, especially on more complex, intricate miniatures. Um, but it's one of those things that really can, especially when you've got large, flat surfaces that are separated out um, by not much detail. Um, I mean, the Bretonian horse is really the classic example of this. You have these big flat areas right where you just have like a slightly raised surface differentiating the two something like lining in a case like this can really make the individual sections uh, of the model and miniature pop and stand out so there you go nice simple one for today uh, i hope you enjoy uh subscribe to see more hobby cheating in the future give it a like if you liked it if you've got suggestions for future hobby cheating that you want to see hey throw it in the comments i always always love and appreciate suggestions and i'm happy to respond uh share it because that's always the nicest and best thing you can do i really do appreciate that and as always see you next time